the lord be with you the spirit reading from the holy gospel according to saint mark glory to you lord jesus took with him peter and james and john and led them up a high mountain where they could be alone by themselves there in their presence he was transfigured his clothes became dazzling white whiter than any earthly bleacher could make them elijah appeared to them with moses and they were talking with jesus then peter spoke to jesus rabbi he said it is wonderful for us to be here so let us make three tents one for you one for moses and one for elijah he did not know what to say they were so frightened and a cloud came covering them in shadow and there came a voice from the cloud this is my son the beloved listen to him then suddenly when they looked around they saw no one with them any more but only jesus as they came down the mountain he warned them to tell no one what they had seen until after the son of man had risen from the dead they observed the warning faithfully through among themselves they discussed though they they though among themselves they discussed what rising from the dead could mean the gospel of the lord praise, praise to you lord, lord jesus, jesus christ. christ please be seated praise the lord thank you jesus my dear brothers and sisters today as we celebrate the feast of transfiguration i would like to share with you something very important in a christian life one of the hot topics which many people ask this question and we have uh, answer from this bible passage for the answer for this question that is uh, from gospel of mark chapter 9 verse 2 onwards we read like this let us read six days later jesus took with him peter and james and john and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them so six later six days later that means before six days something happened and what happened before six days that was when jesus spoke about his suffering he said he's going to die on mount calvary and all his death and suffering and all those things he uh, shared as a, after that six days there was a long silence of six days and six days after jesus took these three disciples to the mountain top mount tabor one of the highest mountain there and he went to the top of this mountain and there he transfigured before them transfiguration means jesus really showed his glory he showed his real glory in front of his disciples and there is something also happened along with this when jesus showed uh, this uh, his real glory there something happened that is was three we read and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them his clothes changed not only his body changed even his clothes changed his appearance changed his whole uh, setup changed dazzling white no one could bleach that cloth so much because it's so white and then there is one more thing we see was for and there appeared to them elijah and moses who were talking with jesus elijah and moses appeared to jesus in front of jesus and both of them lived around 1400 years before christ and they came to jesus and then they were talking with jesus they were talking to jesus and these disciples peter john and james they recognized elijah and moses they never saw elijah and moses but they recognized elijah and moses how so these are the things that we need to clarify remember my dear brothers and sisters after resurrection even though we have died 2000 years ago or people have died 2000 years ago 10000 years ago we will be able to recognize each other without introducing ourselves 
we will be able to understand and recognize each other after death when we are resurrected in resurrection we all have our own identity and we all will be able to reach out to other person and we will be able to recognize the other person and now i would like to clarify this question which is a very very strong question which many people ask against the catholics there are many people say father why do we need mediators intercessors we have only one mediator that is jesus christ and therefore why do you need more mediators the truth is the catholic church also believes that there is only one mediator between the heavenly father and the humanity that is jesus christ there is no other mediator between the heaven and the earth and we have only one mediator that is jesus christ then what is the role of mother mary and all the all the saints what do they do in our life what is their role their role is not mediatorship but intercession their role is to intercede for us and then you may ask me father why do you why do we need an intercessor why do we need somebody to intercede for us why can't we speak directly to jesus why can't we convey the message directly to god why can't we pray directly this is something which many people ask even catholics some people ask because they are not clear about it my dear brothers and sisters let us see what does the bible speak about it first of all all those who are dead and gone from this world they are not dead maybe they are dead for us but for god they are alive they are alive elijah is gone many years 1500 years ago elijah is gone but now he is alive in the presence of god moses was dead around uh, nearly 1800 years ago before jesus christ before jesus christ 1800 years ago G uh, El uh, moses died but he is alive in the presence of god before jesus christ around 1400 years ago elijah died but he is alive during the time of jesus and even now he is alive why we read like this gospel of luke chapter 20 verse 37 gospel of luke chapter 10 20 verse 37 and the fact that the dead are raised moses himself showed in the story about the bush where he speaks of the lord as the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob was 38 was 38 we read like this now he is not god of the dead when we say god of abraham if abraham is dead and is still dead then we have to tell god is god of god of dead when we say god of is isaac if isaac is still dead then god is god of dead when we say god of israel israel is still dead if you think israel is still dead then god is god of dead but god says they are not dead they are alive therefore god is god of alive living people now he is god not of the dead but of the living for to him all of them are alive praise the lord praise the lord to him all of them are alive so to to god your grandfather your great grandfather your mother in law father in law all those who are dead and gone they are all alive in front of god please do remember this my dear brothers and sisters this is very important therefore we have no problem in contacting them and speaking to them asking their intercession we need to ask the intercession of these people we need to beg for intercession and now why do we need to ask their help because we know elijah was dead and is come uh, elijah was taken heaven to heaven and now he's come in front of jesus uh, even after 1400 years moses was dead and buried and he is alive now after 1800 years after they are talking to jesus what does it mean even the dead people have access to jesus even the dead people speak to jesus the so called dead but they are alive in front of god 
because for god every one of them are alive and god they are they are able to speak to god they are able to speak to jesus and what did elijah and moses speak to jesus they were speaking about what jesus is going to accomplish on earth his passion death and resurrection what does it mean elijah is concerned about what is happening on earth moses is concerned about what is happening on earth even after thousands years moses and elijah is are concerned about what is happening on earth what does it mean all those who are dead from our communities from our families all the holy saints who are heaven who are living who are alive in the presence of god they are concerned about me and you they are concerned about our family situation they are concerned about what is happening in this world they are concerned about every suffering and they have access to speak to jesus they speak to jesus and jesus listen to them and that is the proof the proof is given in this bible passage proof is given here now there are people i have seen many protestants come and ask father why do we need to ask mother mary to pray for us why do you need to ask saint george to pray for us saint john to pray for us saint peter to pray for us saint vincent de paul saint augustine of canterbury to pray for us why can't we ask god directly the prayer do you think god will deny your prayer if you pray directly will god deny your prayer so why do we need somebody else why do you need all these saints why can't we pray directly this is something which many people ask and there are many people still not convinced what does the bible say we need ev for everything we need answers from the bible let us see there is something that we need to remember if i am sinful my prayer has got limitation if i have sin in my body my prayer will be limited even if i am 100% holy and one small one percentage for example even if i am 99 percentage of holy and one percentage of sin my prayer will have a very strong limitation but those people who are dead and gone who are 100% holy now because they are they are canonized saints they are in the presence of god they are perfectly all right they are perfectly purified their prayer is so powerful because they are 100% holy now where is it written in the bible let us read book of genesis chapter 20 was one on words there is an incident written in the uh, spoken in the life of abraham from there abraham journeyed towards region of negeb and settled between kadesh and shur while residing in gerar as an alien was to abraham said to his wife sarah she is my sister and king abimelech of gerar uh, sent and took sarah you know uh, no one is allowed to take the wife of someone else but they are allowed to take the wife uh, sister of somebody else in marriage so king abimelech wanted to get married to sarah and abraham had already told she is my sister then abimelech thought okay then there is nothing wrong in taking her as wife and he took her as wife was 3 we read lead we read like this but god came to abimelech in a dream by night and said to him see god abimelech has got a very good strong relationship with god just like abraham also has got a strong relationship with god abimelech also has got strong relationship with god and god came to abimelech in a dream you are about to die because of the woman whom you have taken for she is a married woman anyone who is trying to get attracted to or attached to any married woman or married man is committing a terrible sin my dear brothers and sisters do not ever get try to get attracted or get attraction of a boy a man or woman who is already married according to the bible it is considered a heinous crime so you are about to die because of the woman whom you have taken because she is a married woman because of which you are going to die and then was for now abimelech had not approached her 
Abimelech, though she has, he has taken her as wife, but did not touch her, did not approach her. So he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent people? I have not done anything wrong. I just married her because I thought she is the sister of Abraham. I didn't know that she was married. That's why I got married. Lord, will you destroy an innocent people? Then verse 5. Did he not himself say to me, she is my sister and she herself said he is my brother. I did this in the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands. Then verse 6. Then God said to him in the dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. Furthermore, it was I who kept you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. See, Abimelech is a good person. Therefore, God protected. God is speaking to him directly. And God said, since you are a good person, I protected you from falling into sin. If you are a good person, God will make sure to protect you from falling into sin. Many people, they wonder, you have so many opportunities for you to fall into sin, but you don't fall into not because of anything of your merit, but because God has protected you. Because you are a person of integrity. You are a person of integrity. You are a holy person. Therefore, God is covering you from all the corners. Some people, they have already decided to really want to commit sin and they will commit sin. But there are many people who doesn't want to commit sin, but there are temptations around. But God protects them from falling into sin because, because they are a man of integrity, woman of integrity. And God said... I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. Furthermore, it was I who kept you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Then verse 7, we read like this. So Abimelech rose early. Verse 7. Now then return the man's wife. Now then return the man's wife. And the next word is very important. For he is a prophet and he will pray for you and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die. You and all, all that you are yours. Now it's very interesting. Abhimalik is a holy man. He's a good man. He's a man of integrity. He has got connection with God. He is directly speak to God and God speak to him. And God is telling him directly. Now you are in a sinful bondage. You did a mistake. You did a crime. Therefore, if you pray to me, it won't reach me. Now do one thing. That man is a prophet. He's a holy man. You go and tell him to pray for you. You go and tell him to pray for you, then I will bless you. I used to wonder, why did God do that? God could have said, Abimelech, since you are repenting and you are speaking to me, now I forgive you, don't worry, you are blessed. Why does he need Abraham? Why is God asking him to go to Abraham? He is speaking directly. And he is also speaking back directly. Why can't he bless directly? Why do you need someone else to pray for him? This is something we need to understand my dear brothers and sisters. When even if you are holy. If you are in sinful. Any sin that is bondage. Or anything that is affecting you. You need a prophet, a holy man, a saint to intercede for you. That is why, suppose I'm a priest, I'm preaching the word of God, I'm praying to Jesus. Jesus, we have very good hot connection between each other. Why God, why can't you bless me? Then the Lord knows all my weaknesses. The Lord knows all my weakness, all my sinful nature. God says, even if I have connection with God, even if I'm able to hear his voice, he will tell me, Father Joseph, I love you. I accept you. You are a man of integrity. But if you really want a blessing, ask Mother Mary to pray for you. Ask Saint Joseph to pray for you. Ask Saint Dominic to pray for you. Saint Vincent de Paul to pray for you. Saint Teresa of Lisieux to pray for you. And I will bless you. I will pray for you. This is biblical. They are alive in front of God and they are concerned about and, and about us and God, they have access to God. Just like Elijah and Moses spoke to Jesus about what was going to happen on the earth and they were able to speak and God was speaking to them. 
therefore my dear brothers and sisters do not be confused and misguided misled by wrong people who are misinterpreting the bible and they may tell you you don't need anybody to intercede for you you just speak directly if that was possible then why did god tell abimelech see abimelech i know you you are very good man you did it in, 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 with an innocent heart he never wanted to do it but he's you need someone you need somebody to intercede for you though we speak directly unless and until someone else intercede in front of me for you i cannot bless you praise the lord now then return the man's wife first you rectify your mistake after rectifying your mistake then ask the intercession of holy people that is why in the catholic church we have so many holy people who are canonized holy people so you don't need to be confused so whom to ask should i ask father joseph i don't know how holy he is should i ask someone else i don't know how holy they are there are the church has already examined the life of so many holy people and declared them as saints you don't need to be confused or worried about it just ask them and they will be able to help you that is why we have canonized saints in the church but if you do not restore her know that you are you shall surely die you and all that yours was eight we read like this so abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told them all these things and their men were very much afraid everyone was afraid was nine we read like this then abimelech called abraham and said to him what have you done to us have you uh, have i sinned against you that you have brought such great guilt on me and my kingdom you have done things to me that ought not to be done was 10 and abimelech said to abraham what were you thinking of that you did this thing was 11 Abraham said I did it because I thought there is no fear of God at all in this place and they will kill me because my wife was 12 besides she is indeed my sister the daughter of my father but not the daughter of my mother and she became my wife step, you know step uh, sister so verse 13 and when god caused me to wander from my father's house said to her this is the kindness you must do to me at every place to which we come say of me he is my brother was 14 then abimelech took sheep and oxen and male and female slaves and gave them to abraham and restored his wife sarah to him was 15 abimelech said my land is before you settle where it pleases you was 16 to sara he said look i have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver it is your exoneration before all who are with you you are completely vindicated and now verse 17 is very important then abraham prayed to god and god healed abimelech and also healed his wife female slaves so that they bore children my dear brothers and sisters when abraham prayed to god god blessed abimelech though abimelech doesn't need an intercessor they are in very good connection with god but still god himself said you need intercessor god himself tells you protestants catholics everyone you need intercessors you need holy prophets holy ones to intercede in front of god this is biblical you can't say i will go directly see one person went to directly and what happened to him he was unable to get blessings directly he needed an intercessor he needed someone to pray for him and only then blessings was released to him they that is why we have in the catholic church we are so many intercessors of of holy saints army of saints to intercede for us we all need to have some special favorite saints for us to intercede for us and you will see the miracles happens the other day we celebrated the feast of john maria viani saint john maria viani had a special love for saint philomena and every time when miracles and wonders used to take place and people used to come to saint john maria viani and say saint i mean john maria viani you are very holy you are able to perform miracles in jesus name then he is to say it's all because of saint philomena i never sleeps without asking her intercession i am a sinner 
but she is holy her intercession is so powerful therefore and she he used to say it's all because of the intercession of saint philomena he was having a special love for saint philomena and all the prayers which he made were heard through the saint philomena and that's how in all france the devotion to saint philomena became very famous and it is because of saint john maria viani devotion to saint philomena became very famous and spread all over the world and there are so many favorite saints for each and every one of us it's good to have this connection because somewhere god is giving us some intercessor why because god says father joseph you need an intercessor you need saint saint therese of lisieux to intercede for you because you may though you are a priest and you are so connected to me but still your sin will block me you need to ask saint therese of lisieux to pray for you and i will bless you i will release i will protect you i will cover you i will heal you that is why we all have our own saints so my dear brothers and sisters remember the, that is why in today's gospel transfiguration on mount tabor elijah is able to speak to jesus directly because though he is died and gone more than 1000 years ago before jesus christ moses is speaking to jesus directly and jesus is speaking to moses and they are they are talking not about how to how to run the heaven they were not talking about that the budget of heaven or the the internal um, uh, aspects of the heaven and who will control the traffic and nothing of this sort they were concerned about what is happening on earth they were discussing about his passion death and resurrection that means they are watching over us elijah moses all of them all those who are dead and gone they are able to watch over us they are aware of what is happening on earth no wonder we need their intercession praise the lord therefore my dear brothers and sisters do not be deceived or do not be misguided and misled by the wrong teachings that the people spread which is not authentic teaching from the uh, first century there are so many wrong teachings that is coming up in these last centuries please do not be deceived but follow the teaching of the lord and the bible let's ask the intercession of all the saints all the angels all the heavenly beings so that we may be blessed and protected we have only one mediator that is jesus christ we, but we need lots of intercessors to intercede for us because we are all sinners and on this day of transfiguration let us see how angel, uh, uh, moses and elijah interceded in front of jesus so that the transfiguration i mean the passion death of resurrection should take place and the whole humanity should be saved